Hi boys and girls, welcome back to our stories all about the history of the earth. Now we're going into lesson three. Here we go. As always, let's look at some words we need to listen for. The first word we're gonna listen for is erupts. That means sends out lava, ash, and gas in a sudden explosions. An example of this is when a volcano erupts, it is a sudden explosion that sends out lava, ash, and gas. The next word we're gonna listen for in our story is liquid. Liquid is something that does not keep its shape and instead takes the shape of its container. An example of this is, there is liquid rock deep inside the earth. The next word to listen for is molten. Molten means melted. An example of this is, it takes very high temperatures to melt. It takes very high temperatures to melt metals into molten forms. The next word to listen for is solid. Solid means it keeps its shape hard. An example of this is, they put the water in the freezer so it would become solid ice. And the last word to listen for is volcano. A volcano is a mountain that forms over a crack in the Earth's crust from which lava, ash, gas, and fire erupts. An example of this is, in order to study the volcano, the scientists had to climb from the bottom of the volcano to the very top. Let's review our Where Are We chart again. As we know, boys and girls, our solar system is what we learned about in our last knowledge domain. We live on, pla on planet Earth. Then there's the continent that we live on, North America. On North America, we live in the country, United States of America. In the United States of America, we live in the state of Pennsylvania. In the state of Pennsylvania, boys and girls, we live in the city of Erie. And boys and girls, in the city of Erie, there is you. You live in your home, on your street, in your neighborhood. You are a very important part of our home on earth. Let's continue on with our story and see what Jerry, the geologist, is going to teach us today. Listen carefully and you will hear that inside the earth there are solids and liquids. We will find out more about the other layers of the earth, the mantle, and the core. Today we are going to pretend that we can journey deep deep into the earth all the way to the very center nearly 4,000 miles from where you are sitting right now. The first stop is the layer beneath the crust, which is called the mantle. The mantle is a whopping 1,800 miles thick and contains most of the Earth's rock. Because most of the Earth is made of rock, that means that most of the Earth is contained within the mantle. The mantle is mostly made of solid rock. The closer to the crust, the cooler and harder the mantle tends to be. But as you go deeper, closer to the core, the mantle gets hotter and becomes soft and gooey. Heat closer to the core causes the rock inside the mantle to move around quite a bit. But in most places, it is still solid rather than liquid. Did you hear the word heat again? Heat causes parts of the mantle to move around. Remember, something that is solid keeps its shape, while something that is liquid can move around and take the shape of whatever it is in. The mantle surrounds the core or center of the earth. The core has two parts, the inner core and the outer core. The inner core is a solid metal ball. 
The outer core is also metal, but it is not solid. It is made up of melted or molten metal. This means that deep down inside the earth, thousands of miles beneath your feet, there is a giant sea of red hot molten metal surrounding a solid metal ball. Scientists believe that the very center of the earth, the inner core, is actually hotter than the surface of the sun, which is a blazing 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The inner core is much hotter than the outer core. It may seem strange, therefore, that the outer core of the earth is molten metal, yet the inner core at the very center of the earth where it is the hottest is a solid ball of metal, which, by the way, is just a bit smaller than the moon. The reason that the inner core is solid has to do with the incredible pressure of the earth's entire weight pressing inward. The more pressure you put on something, the more heat you need to cause that thing to boil or melt. This is why the metal at the very center of the earth, the inner core, is solid instead of liquid. Despite the intense heat, there is simply too much pressure caused by the weight of the rest of the earth, so the center of the earth cannot melt and it remains solid. The crust upon which we live is constantly being changed and reshaped due to heat and pressure caused by activity in the Earth's mantle and core. Did you hear the words heat and pressure again? Heat and pressure in the Earth's mantle change the Earth's crust. The San Bernito Mountains that you see in this picture, along with many other mountains along the west coast of North America, from Mexico to Alaska, were created by changes inside the earth. Remember, the parts of the mantle that are closest to the core are soft and gooey. That hot gooey material in the mantle does not always stay in the mantle. Sometimes it rises up to the surface. Every so often, some of that extremely hot molten rock or magma pushes up through the mantle and forces its way into the cracks and crevices in the crust. Over time, the magna collects in a magma chamber, such as the one near the bottom of the picture. The heat in the magma chamber releases gas from the magma, which builds up and creates pressure. The pressure builds and builds until one day, boom! Did you hear the words heat and pressure again? Heat and pressure cause volcanoes to erupt. The magma erupts in a volcano of lava, ash, gas, and fire. Once it is released from the earth, the magma becomes lava flowing liquid rock, which flows across the ground until it cools and hardens into solid rock once again. The eruption of lava, ash, gas, and fire forms a volcano. Now that I have told you about volcanoes, let me explain one more thing. Thanks to geologists, we have a pretty good idea when and where these geological events are likely to occur. Geologists help predict where volcanoes are most likely to occur, and this helps keep people safe by discouraging them from building homes close to dangerous areas. It is not always possible to predict when and where geological disasters will occur, but geologists work hard to give people as much warning as we can. Boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed learning about liquids and solids and even a little bit about volcanoes. The next time we come together for a story, we will learn even more about volcanoes. Have fun with the rest of your activities today, and I'll see you next time.